Today we'll discuss about pollination. Pollination. In first topic, we had a quick glance over the pollination. Pollination is a transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma. Anther to stigma. This is anther this is stigma transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of same flower if it is bisexual or different flowers if two unisexual flowers are present of same plant it means both male and female flowers are there in the same plant or different plants that the same plant male and female flowers are there that is monoecious condition and or different plants where male plant uh, flower is there in one plant and a female flower is there in another plant dioecious condition of same species of same species transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of same flower or different flowers of same plant or different plants of same species of same species they must be if two different plants are there they must be belonging to same species that is the definition for pollination transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of same flower or different flowers of same plant or different plants of same species that is the definition for the pollination we do have types we can make other types by splitting the definition of that pollination I have mentioned transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of same flower of a plant and different flowers of same plant or different plants different flowers of same plant or different flowers or else a flower of different plants but they must be belonging to same species but they belonging to same species here we have mentioned transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of same flower when if the bisexual flowers are there
same flower or different flowers of same plant it means male and female flowers are there but they are there in same plant it means they are there in same plant means monoecious male and female flowers they are unisexual flowers they are present in the same plant monoecious and flowers of different plants it means different flowers in a two different plants that is dioecious condition dioecious condition the things which i have written here they are the types that's all the definition is transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of same flower or different flowers of same plant or different plants of same species of same species and by making use of these things we can make the types first one autogeny autogeny what is autogeny transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of same flower of a plant that's all even is otherwise said to be self pollination self pollination that is autogeny transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of same flower of a plant and second one jitnogeny jitnogeny means what transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of two different flowers of same plant here what has happened in a single plant male flowers are also there and female flowers are there it means unisexual flowers those two different flowers but they are there in the same plant that is a jitnogeny jitnogeny transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of two different flowers of same plant and in that plant the monoecious condition is there it means male and female flowers in same plant third one is genogeny genogeny what is genogeny transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of flowers of two different plants flowers of two different plants it means male flower is there in one plant and a female flower is there in another plant so that pollen grains from male flower transferred to the female flower in the two different plants that is a genogeny if you connect all these statements that is the definition for pollination transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of same flower or different flowers of same plant or different plants and if you divide that statement of definition we can see the types autogeny where the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of same flowers of a plant this condition is very rare that is self formation even though Uh, 
majority of flowers are bisexual. As bisexual flowers are there means there should be a self-pollination. But rarely self-pollination occurs. Most of the time, even though they are bisexual flowers, cross-pollination is must. Very rarely self-pollination takes place. That's what, you know, in autogamy, we do have two types. In only in these two conditions, we can get autogamy or self-pollination. One is chasmogamy. Second one is Clistogen. Clistogen. Chasmogeny and a clistogen. In only in these two conditions we can expect self-pollination. Where self-pollination is must, autogeny is must, then they must be bisexual. And in the chasmogeny, you know. A release of pollen grains from anther and acceptance of stigma in the same flower is synchronized. Is synchronized. What it means? When the pollen grains are released from the anther, at the same time, Stigma is ready, ready to accept those pollen grains. It means both of them get matured at a time. When the pollen grains are released from anther, at the same time, stigma is ready to accept those pollen grains. It means release of pollen grains from the anther and acceptance of stigma are synchronized. It means takes place at a time. Takes place at a time. Then only chasmogeny is possible. Chasmogeny is possible. An example for this chasmogeny in oxalis. and Comelina. In those two plants where pollen grains when they are produced from the anther stigma is ready to accept the pollen grains. It means when release of pollen grain from the anther and acceptance of stigma are synchronized. That is just what you and a clistogeny. Clistogeny is a condition where flowers remain closed. Remain closed. Is a bisexual flower, it never bloom. Is a bisexual, it never bloom. So that no chance for the other, other pollen grains to enter in. As it is bisexual, in anther pollen grains are formed and the stigma is ready to accept the same flower. That is clistogamy. This we could notice in groundnut. Groundnut. You might have seen the fruits of groundnut are underground. And Flowers will appear in underground only. They are all clistogamous flowers, closed flowers. And they are bisexual. Ferti uh, pollination takes place, followed by fertilization, so that fruits are formed underground only. In the groundnut, you know, fruits which are there, they are not root modification. They are actual fruits. Because flowers are clistogamous, they are underground, 
pollination takes place within the same flower and fruits are formed. And only in these two conditions we do expect autogamy even though flowers are bisexual. One is the release of pollen grains from the anther and acceptance of stigma are synchronized. That is the chasmogamy. If a bisexual flowers are remain closer so that no chance of other pollen grains to come and achieve the pollination. And only in these two conditions, autogamy is there. And now, autogamy is otherwise said to be self pollination. And now, these two come under cross pollination. Cross pollination. Genogamy comes under cross pollination. Genogamy comes under cross pollination because in a genogamy, transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of different flowers of same plant. Two different flowers of same plant. From male flower to female flower of same plant and is a cross pollination it's a cross pollination even though male and female flowers are present in the same plant but pollination took place in two different flowers you know we can say genogamy is a cross pollination functionally but genetically is an autogamy or self pollination because those male and female flowers are present in same plant so that genetically is an autogamy self pollination but functionally is a cross pollination functionally is a cross pollination they can make a neat question here in which of the following types of pollination functionally a pollination is a cross pollination but genetically a self pollination and they would give the answers like chasmogamy, clistogamy, zitinogamy, genogamy this is possible only in zitinogamy this is possible only in genogamy. It means transfer from one flower to the other flower. Functionally is a cross pollination. But the same flowers are, uh, both the male and female flowers are there in the same plant. That is, genetically they are same. Because plant is same. Genogamy is functionally cross pollination and genetically self-pollination as well. And now, what is zechinogamy? And uh, this we could notice in case of coconut, maize, javara, fair. They are all monoecious plants. Both male and female flowers are there in same plant. Take for example in coconut. There is a spadix inflorescence covered by the spathe. If you analyze that inflorescence, uh, spherical shaped female flowers at the base and a triangular shaped male flowers at the top. Pollen grains from those male flowers are transferred to the female flowers but in the same plant and those uh, spherical shaped female flowers after fertilization becomes coconut fruits coconut fruits that's all example for that and now genogamy genogamy is a transfer of pollen grains from anther to sigma of flowers of two different plants 
flowers of two different plants and this we can notice in dioecious plants in a dioecious plants because male flower is there in one plant and a female flower is there in another plant this we can see in papaya papaya where pollen grains are transferred from anther to stigma of flowers of two different plants that's all this is about the types with the example and among them autogamy is very rare and is taking place only in bisexual flowers and majority of the flowers are bisexual till then hardly in a few flowers that autogamy or self pollination is taking place only in chasmogamy and clistogamy very rare examples even though they are bisexual cross gynogamy is very very possible as well even genogamy is also possible now it's time to discuss about pollinating agents pollinating agents this pollination and mainly cross pollination is very common so that pollinating agents are required to transfer the pollen grains we do have abiotic pollinating agents and also biotic pollinating agents abiotic pollinating agents and the biotic pollinating agents are present abiotic means non living non living pollinating agents are wind and water a pollination takes place by wind even a pollination takes place by water biotic pollinating agents means the pollination takes place by living beings animals animals let us see how the pollination takes place by wind with the example and pollination takes place by the essence of water with the example even how it takes place by animals let us discuss about pollination by wind remember a pollination by wind is named as anemophily anemophily if the pollination takes place by the essence of wind then it is said to be anemophily by wind a abiotic come pollinating agent like wind by which anemophily takes place means pollination takes place they may ask a typical one mass question what is anemophily a pollination by wind is named as anemophily once in need they have asked one confused question anemophily means answers way a pollination by animals a pollination by water a pollination by wind like that they had given if first answer they had given is a pollination by animals this anemophily and the animals they quite resemble each other 
we may confuse and make the mark animals that's what you know remember a pollination by wind is named as anemophily anemophily and at this uh, let us see what are the characteristic features of this anemophilous flower because they have to carry by a biotic component that is wind then what are the characteristic features in anemophilous flowers characteristic features of anemophilous flowers anemophilous flowers means are the flowers where pollination takes place by wind first one male flowers are in a cluster <coughs> that is in inflorescence and pollen grains are produced in large quantity in anemophilous flowers pollen grains are produced in large quantity why there is a big loss of pollen grains while carried by the wind from one flower of a plant to a female flower of another plant wind has to carry them so that they may or may not reach that flower so that there is a big loss while pollen grains are carried that's why you know pollen grains must be produced in a large quantity and pollen grains are very small and light in weight and dry and non sticky pollen grains must be very small light in weight because they have to carry it by the wind dry if they are dry they will be light in weight and a non sticky no need to adhere to the wind as well non sticky that is another characteristic feature and then female flowers should have feathery stigma feathery stigma stigma is feather like and exposed to the wind is exposed to the wind a pollen grains which are carried by the wind should be caught by that feathery stigma that female flowers you know they should have feathery stigma so that they can easily catch the pollen grains which are carried by the wind these are very important and in this animal anemophilous flowers anemophilous flowers are not colorful they don't have fragrance even they don't have nectar because here no need to attract the insects for pollination that's why they are not colorful and no need to attract the insects by the smell so that they are not having any fragrance and even they don't have nectar it's a food for the insects no need to give food to the wind it means anemophilous flowers 
don't have color fragrance and nectar no color no fragrance and no nectar in the flowers in the flowers this is about the characteristic features of anemophilous flowers and anemophily is taking place mainly in grasses mainly in grasses where the pollination is achieved by the essence of wind and let us see another abiotic pollinating agent water how does it take place a pollination which takes place by water is named as hydrophily hydrophily a pollination which is achieved or which is taking place by water then it is said to be hydrophily by water and hydrophily we can notice in aquatic plants we do find hydrophily in aquatic plants let me explain hydrophily by taking one example uh, usually hydrophily takes place in velicinaria and seaweeds here we can notice hydrophily and a an interesting way of hydrophily an interesting mechanism of hydrophily we can notice in velicinaria plant Velisneria is an aquatic plant and rooted at the bottom of a pond. This is a pond. It is a surface of water and it's a female. it's a female plant with the female flower the plants are rooted at the bottom but even totally submerged in water but it gives out the flowers which are having long pedicel and the flower is floating on the surface of the water that flower is floating on the surface of the water and this is a male plant male plant and it is having a cluster of flowers very small flowers which are in cluster and present at the base as well These are male flowers, and this is female flower. Female flower. Here, what happens is this female, both the female plant and the male plant are rooted in the bottom. Their vegetative parts are totally submerged. in this female plant it bears a single solitary large flower is floating on the surface of water with a long pedicel but male plants do have 
a cluster of very small male flowers but they are at the bottom only when both the flowers get mature these male flowers are detached from the male plant and they float on the surface of water they are detached male flowers are detached from the male plant and are floating on the surface of the water due to tidal current due to tides they come up close to female flower and a pollination is achieved pollination is achieved once the pollination is achieved a coiling of pedicel takes place when this pedicel gets coiled this female flower goes to the bottom at the base of female plant and where the fertilization takes place under the water even fruit setting is also taking place in the water itself at the bottom very interesting type of hydrophily noticed in a very scenario plant here they are dioecious plants it means uh, female flower in female plant and male flowers in male plant dioecious and both of them are rooted at the bottom and a female flower is having longer pedicel and is floating on the surface of the water but the male flowers they are smaller and are in cluster present at the base of that male plant when they get matured male flowers get detached and they go to the surface of the water due to tidal current they go to very close to that female flower and a pollination is achieved once the pollination is achieved that long pedicel you know it gets coiled so that that pollinated female flower goes to the bottom where fertilization is achieved and finally fruit setting everything takes place under water only pollination takes place on the surface of the water but you can see with little difference that is <coughs> male uh, female and male plants they are also rooted at the bottom and submerged in the water only but the pollen grains released from male flower are released in water and some of those pollen grains may come in contact with the female flowers and pollination can be achieved here this is some sort of interesting thing in valesmeria but in sea weeds both female and male plants they are submerged in water and the male flowers release the pollen grains in water itself uh, through the water gradually they move towards the female flower and the pollination is achieved this is about hydrophily a pollination by wind is anemophily a pollination by water is hydrophily that water hesia which is considered as a terror of bengal is also aquatic plant water hesia a terror of bengal is also aquatic plant concern to that plant once a neat question was asked water hesia which is commonly named as terror of bengal is an aquatic plant a pollination takes place by anemophily hydrophily entomophily entomophily means a pollination by insects they have specified is a hydro is a aquatic plant suddenly we will make the mark hydrophily
a pollination by water is absolutely wrong. Even though that water hysium is an aquatic plant, it bears a large flowers which are not submerged. They are aerial and very attractive. They attract the insects. And in that water hysium, even though it is an aquatic plant, flowers are very beautiful, colorful and they are aerial so that they attract the insects and the insects will come and achieve the pollination. That is entomophily. And many times as it is aquatic, you know, suddenly we we'll think of a pollination takes place by hydrophily. But in case of that water hysium, even though it is an aquatic plant, but the flowers which are colorful, aerial, so that they can attract the insects and the pollination takes place by insects, that is entomophily. And now it's time to discuss about a pollination by a biotic pollinator, pollinating insects. By biotic pollinating essence. Mainly the pollination by biotic essence means living beings. It takes place by honeybees wasps, butterflies like insects, even birds like hummingbird, sunbird, even it takes place by some primates like lemur and garden lizard can also do this and bat, already we know that in case of Bomax, it uh, bears flowers once in its lifetime after 50 to 100 years. Once flowers appear, where pollination takes place by bat. There are many animals which are involved in pollination. But in this, we have to discuss about entomophily. Entomophily. What is entomophily? Entomophily is a pollination by insects. Pollination by insects. That is said to be entomophily. And in entomophily, you know, let us see what are the characteristic features of entomophilous plants. Features of entomophilous plants. Characteristic features of entomophilous plants. Entomophilous flowers means where the pollination takes place by insects. First one. Flowers are having various color. They are variously colored. They are with very attractive color. It is badly needed to attract the insects. And second one is they produce fragrance, a sweet smell. By this smell, insects will visit the flower for pollination. Third one is nectar. Nectar which is a secretion in flower and is a food for 
visiting insects if the insects visit the flower mainly they visit the flower for the sake of food so that if the nectar is there they get the food on other hand they achieve the pollination the significant feature of the entomophilus flower is that flowers must be colorful they should have fragrance smell and they do have nectar nectar so that insects can be visiting to those flowers and achieve the pollination and some there are some flowers you know they are night blooming flowers they bloom during night as they bloom during night if they are colorful also they won't be visible but the night blooming flowers can produce very sweet smell only by the smell insects visit the flowers mainly fragrance plays very important role in the night blooming flowers because they have to have the smell then only during night insects can recognize the position of the flowers and uh, if the flower uh, insects visit the flower they move around the flower to get the food and most of the flowers do have the nectar and that is the food to the insects in addition to that those insects you know do have sticky body insects must have sticky body then only while insects are moving around the flower and within the flower pollen grains will be dusted on their body and dusted pollen grains must adhere to the body and they can be carried by those insects as well this is the main purpose insects visit the flower mainly for the food even some insects visit the flower for their safe dwelling places to lay the eggs they want to place or lay eggs in very safe place in in search of safe dwelling place some insects visit the flower and they achieve the pollination take for example some insects they visit amorpho phallus plant we should remember this amorphophallus plant because of its <coughs> tallest flower the flower of this plant is around 6 feet in length length of flower is 6 feet the tallest flowers are there in which plant amorphophallus plant here some insects visit this flower because is the very tallest one and they enter inside lay their eggs and come out on the other hand they achieve the pollination here they are visiting not for the food but for the safe dwelling place and from those eggs young ones will hatch out and they will come out and one more such example that is <coughs> moth and yucca plant remember the life cycle of both moth and yucca plant won't be completed if any one among them is absent for the life cycle of moth it needs 
eka plant for the life cycle of eka plant moth is necessary that much they are correlated to each other <coughs> this moth you know it enters into the flower of eka plant where it achieves pollination and when it enters inside it lays the eggs and you will be surprised to know when the eggs are laid uh, the pollination followed by fertilization takes place even fruits will form at the time of formation of seeds from those eggs young ones are hatched out and hatched out young ones can eat some seeds also young seeds and they come out here this is a wonderful relation between moth and eka plant it means insects visit the flower mainly because of food even for safe dwelling places